of the fish. Yep. Feels pretty good. It's good bass. Might be the biggest of the day. We got them dialed in on the slim swims, people. They are sitting in these shallow rocks, waiting for a swim bait. A small swim bait. Look at that, that's, I think that's the biggest of the day. Pound, one pound at least. Look at, the, just a healthy shape to these bass. Really healthy shape. Beautiful fish. All right, beautiful fish, thank you. Thank you for biting. Appreciate you, bud. Got him. Stay down, please. Stay down. <laughs> it's a decent fish, I think. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Not bad at all. It's like a pound and a half, maybe. Not bad. So I'll tell you what I did. See how there's, see those little threads of grass way out there? Mm. I cast to the edge of that, those, that grass and he must have been hiding under it. Okay. I started retrieving it away from the grass and thump. So if you, I guess if you can make a, a big cast way out there, yeah. <laughs> maybe there's some fish hiding in there. Yeah, they like any kind of weeds or or wood or anything that they can hide under. Oh, chubby guy. Go that way. Go that way. There you go. You figured it out. There we go. What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to Cross Country Bank Angler. Today I'm gonna to be shooting a video, uh, another instructional video today about how to fish with one of my favorite, well actually probably my favorite soft plastic uh, lure, and that's gonna be a paddle tail swim bait. So if you've been watching some of the other videos on the channel, you know that I use this type of bait a lot. Um, I have them in lots of different sizes and um, styles. So, um, you know, I've fished them as big as, as this uh, guy right here. This is the Zoom, uh, or the Yum Money Minnow. This is a five inch hollow body swim bait. You see I have it rigged uh, weedless there on a screw lock hook with a quarter ounce uh, weight. All the way down to these Zero Tackle Micro Finesse EPF swim. This is a one inch swim bait. So um, yeah, you know, I use lots of different, um, you know, good variety of uh, these paddle tails. And I just want to get into a little bit of, you know, how I fish them, why I think they're effective, and um, also spend a little time out on the water trying to catch some fish on them. So, you know, if you're just trying to get into paddle tail swim baits and you just, you know, want something to kind of get started with, I recommend a three inch sized paddle tail. Um, so the one that I use the most is gonna be this one right here. This is the Bass Pro Shops Speed Shad. This is a, like I said, a three inch bait. Uh, this color is the one that I prefer to use a lot of the time. Um, it's called Male Perch. And you know, a lot of guys, you know, when you, they talk about swim bait fishing, often it's kind of like a deeper water, you know, slow rolling along the bottom you know, out in the boat uh, type of bait. But I really have a lot of success fishing from the bank with swim baits. You know, this one in particular, this color, I think it's it works really well in the ponds around my area. You can see this bait, it has a, you know, a flat, thin tail section on it. That rounded tail. And then the body is ribbed, 
this gives the lure a lot more action in the water, that rib body. This is actually based on a extremely popular, probably the most popular paddle tail swim bait design that there is right now. It's called the Kitek Swing Impact Fat. Um, and I have used those as well in the past. I have opted for these uh, speed chats from Bass Pro Shop over them, primarily because of durability. The um, Kitex have a really good action. The tail really kicks hard from side to side and uh, it catches fish. But um, in my experience, those baits tend to rip after a couple of fish. And you know, unless you've just got money to throw into fishing gear, I don't think that's very cost effective. I'd like to be able to catch several fish on one soft plastic. So that's why I opted for these speed chads. The action is a little bit different on them, but Overall, you know, it's they're still very effective and I still catch a lot of fish on them. So in terms of the colors here, you can see I kind of held up this silvery one and then this uh, male perch colored one. And basically if I'm imitating, you know, if I'm fishing in a pond or something like that and I think most of the forage is going to be like, you know, panfish or like bluegill or something like that, I tend to go with this color. If I'm fishing in a place where there's gonna be a lot of silvery bait fish, like a river, you know, a big medium sized river, um, or, you know, a larger lake where I know that there's a forage base of like shad or herring or something like that, then I like to go with this um, kind of grayish uh, minnow style color. It's really it as far as colors. I don't get too more complicated than that. And um, these two baits that I showed you um, are rigged on one quarter ounce jig heads. This is the jig that I use the most actually. It's just a basic uh, ball head jig. Well, like I said, one quarter of an ounce. I think it's an Eagle Claw brand, which I know doesn't have like the gr greatest reputation, um, but they work pretty well for me. It's a light wire hook on these, which is something you should be aware of. It's not a heavy hook. So I would recommend this maybe for spinning gear. You know, if you're starting off with a spinning rod, um, going with this light wire hook the hookups on it are you generally very good with a spinning setup. Now on this other one, I have a more of like a dedicated swim bait jig head. This is actually, uh, I have the pack right here. It's the XPS Speed Shad Swim Bait Jig Head. This is also Bass Pro Shops brand. So this one has a slightly, a heavier, bigger uh, hook on it. Gonna be more suited for bigger fish, your bait casting setups. So keep that in mind with the hooks, because I have found, you know, I've tried to throw this uh, this jig head on a bait caster, and I feel like the hookups were not as good. And I think, uh, you know, you're just at more of a risk of the hook bending out, you know, this lighter hook. So in terms of other swim baits that I like to throw here, these EPF swims, I like to throw these on a very small, like 132nd or 164th, 148th ounce jig head. Uh, these are definitely for ultralight fishing. Um, you could also rig these under like a, on like a bobber rig or a float rig on like a medium setup with a few split shots to give you some casting distance. This is a great little finesse option in ultra clear water, ultra pressured water. Um, you can kind of jig it, you can just cast it and retrieve it. And it's a great multi-species bait. You know, just about any species of fish will strike these. And I would say for these speed shads, this is more of like, I primarily catch bass on them, but I've also caught some pickerel and even a couple of catfish on these swim baits. I also like these for trailers, for like a spinner bait, or maybe even like a smaller swim jig. Most of my spinner baits are in like that one quarter ounce size. So this three inch, um, Swim bait works really well for those. It gives it just a little bit of bulk and extra action. Another swim bait that I um, will use on occasion here if I want something a little bit smaller is these two and a half inch uh, finesse swim baits. These are from Z-Man. These are called the Slim Swims. And these have a different shaped tail in comparison to the Speed Chad. You know, it's that elastic stretchy material and these have a more subtle action to them. And overall, I haven't had quite as much success with these, but what I have found is that when you're fishing in cold water, I think this action is actually a little bit more natural. 
It's just a very a, a much more subtle side to side kick. And that's really the key to these paddle tails is the action, that little kicking, swimming action that this tail gives off. It's just an incredibly natural, lifelike action. And any kind of fish that eats smaller fish is going to be drawn to these baits. You could throw these on like an ultralight or a light rod very well. You could uh, consider the consider these um, for just like a, a smaller, even more finessey approach. I have these rigged on one eighth ounce ball head jigs. You know, not a fancy dedicated swim bait head. This is really all you need, I think. And you know, if I uh, really want to kind of downsize, you know, go for like in like shallower water or something, I could throw this on like a one sixteenth or even like a one thirty second ounce if I'm using like a lighter setup, like an ultralight rod or, you know, my BFS setup, for example, which is a light rod. So the big boy here, um, I honestly don't have a whole lot to say about these because even though I've fished them several times, I have not gotten a uh, hit on these. I've never caught a fish on them. They seem pretty good. I mean, in my, I, when they come through the water, you know, I see reeling them in. I think the action looks pretty good. It's got a pretty big uh, tail on it. And that's something that I encourage you to do when you're fishing with these swim baits is to, you know, just drop your line in the water and just sweep it from side to side and just watch that action because there's really nothing else that has an action like these, uh, these lures. So today, you know, I've been talking about the swim baits and, you know, this ones that I use, but I'm actually going to be using a different one that I haven't had a lot of experience with. And that's going to be this pack here. This is, uh, a brand called True Send, and these are called the Shaking Shad. These are three and a half inch baits. It's got a thin paddle tail, kind of like um, the ones that um, I like, you know, that I've been talking about the most here. And I'm actually out here, you know, in my parents' neighborhood, and my dad has just been um, catching a ton of bass on these swim baits. So uh, that's what I'm, I'm gonna be fishing with today. And I think this is going to be a good demonstration for you because the technique is really not that much different for, across all these lures, you know. I'm going to get out onto the water here, start doing some fishing, and we'll talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, how I like to fish these, what situations I like to use them with, and how you can start catching fish on them. All right, people, so... Yeah. All right, guys. So I'm out here with my friend Tom and my dad. And this is a swim bait. This is the color that my dad says works out in this lake. So we're going to give it a shot. I'm having to reshoot this because I didn't have my mic turned on. So, <laughs> so 90% of the time when I'm fishing a swim bait, I just cast it out and let it sink down to the depth that I want. And then just wind it back in at a steady pace. And you just let that tail kick from side to side and really do most of the work for you. You're just getting the bait where you think the fish are going to be and letting that tail action do the rest. Now, if you have a hard bottom, you can let it sink all the way down and retrieve it along the bottom and, you know, knock into, uh, you know, the dirt or sand or whatever it is um, that you want it to, to hit and swim it along the bottom. You can also kind of, uh, you know, let it sink and then lift it up and let it fall back down. And you can get bites that way if they don't want to chase it. Now, since this bait has a pretty natural action, I usually want to fish it in relatively clear water or at least, you know, at the most a light stain. I really would do not fish swim baits in dirty water. It's really an option when the water is clear or I want to search for fish and I don't want to have you know I don't want something very aggressive that has like a lot of flash or vibration just something very lifelike that just looks like a little minnow swimming through the water and I can I will say this this lure has a, a pretty hard little kick to it I can actually feel it in the rod just a little bit 
And I like a swim bait where you can slow it down nice and slow and you can still get a kick out of it. You know, I, I fished a few other lures in the past where it stopped swimming if you slow down a whole lot. And I think that's a real disadvantage. So when you're picking out a lure to try, get one with a thin tail that will kick at a slow speed. Cause sometimes the fish don't want to run something down that's going super fast. But the conditions today are a little bit strange. You know, it's pretty cool for this time of year here. And it's a cloudy day, so we'll see if that affects the fishing or not. And of course, like with any other, you know, straight retrieve lure, you can kind of pause it or pop it or, or um, twitch it, you know, something to give it sort of disrupt the movement and sometimes that can convince a uh, fish to bite it that's just kind of following it and not committing so you know with any kind of lure like this every now and then you can't hurt yourself by um, you know pausing or twitching or, or changing your speed or or something like that yeah buddy guys this is Thomas third fish my dad and I still haven't caught anything he's he's on fire right now that's a, a nicer one at least for this pond uh, I'm catching them it's about a typical little bigger, little bigger but that's not a bad one that's not bad Looks like tool. he hit it a little further out didn't yeah he? well I mean I got I got one in oh I got one in and then he came off. You saw that one, yeah, right? Yeah, I saw you get a hit. He may have been holding the tail. This, where you, this is also where you wonder if it's a um, flip of print network. Yeah. I've caught a few on the lipless out of, out of here. So. Here's a fish, guys. It's not big. We made a cast to some cover. It's a small one. Let's get him off the hook here. Our first fish of the day. Of course, once everyone leaves, I catch one. There we go. All right, first bass of the day is about seven or eight inches. He was hiding under some cover over there and he came out and grabbed it, so. Well, it's a fish. Gotta start somewhere. Thank you, bud. So you can see we've got a little lay down here. There's a fish. All right, that one came off out from the bank and grabbed it. All right, well, the true sand is starting to work. Maybe we just had to sort of change our approach, get to a different part of the lake. I'm gonna get the rest of my stuff and move back here. All right, guys, there's another fish on the yellow true sand swim bait. So like I was saying earlier, 90% of the time, I'm just doing a straight retrieve and we're letting the action of that lure catch the fish. Let's get this, get this guy out into the light. It's got a little bit of damage right here from a bird attack. This is about maybe a 13 inch, 14 inch fish. Of course, once dad and Tom left, I start catching fish. Go figure. I don't know how that works, but about an average size largemouth for this pond. So let's let this guy go. Get a picture. Beautiful fish here. All right, guys. One last look at this fish. Thank you, buddy. The one under the tree was tiny. It was like eight inches. And then this one was probably like half a pound.
There's one. From the edge of that uh, brush pile right there. All right, people. Fish number three. Yeah, it, it might be turning on a little bit. All right, guys. We might have a little pattern here with the truce in after all. There we go. All right, we got them, guys. Another pretty much average size for this lake. Maybe a little smaller than that last one. All right, thank you, fish. The true sand is starting to work, you guys. We're starting to get the feel for it. All right, guys, my dad just landed a nice one, or a, a nicer one than usual, anyway. Is that on the true sand? Yep. A big one. <clears throat> it's a pound and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks about right. It's a good fish. 13. 14. Well, it was close to 14. Close to 14. It's a little folded up. We gotta get him back. <clears throat> nice. Nailed it. Oh, got some more fight in you, don't you? Yeah, he's mad at you. Got one. Yeah, the yellow, the bright yellow one. All right, guys, got another fish. He smoked the true send. Ooh, and one thing I will say is they're committing to this swim bait when they get it. Here we go, got him free. Let's take a look. This is about average for the pond here. He's feisty, a little fired up, maybe a 13 incher. Late evening here, the bite should be you know, we should be able to catch a couple here, hopefully before the sun goes down. Get a picture. Decent fish here. Let's let this guy go. Thank you, sir. There you go. All right, people. You know, I hope you learned something from this one about uh, paddle tail swim baits. You know, it's, I said it before, it's my uh, favorite style of soft plastic when it comes to targeting bass or other game fish and you might say like well cross country what about um the sanko or you know you know stick worms or or uh the fluke or a creature bait and you know those are all um extremely effective uh baits as well and i have caught fish on them but uh, the swim bait for me is um overwhelmingly my uh, preferred soft plastic for bass and you know, a lot of it has to do with, you know, one, I think it's uh, a simple bait to use. And it's also, I think it's a little more fun to fish than um, some of the others as well. You know, it's a simple lure. You know, I can take this out, you know, with a, a novice, you know, a friend of mine that wants to fish and rig one up for them. And, you know, you can just, they can just cast it out and retrieve it back uh, to them at a steady pace and catch nice fish. So, you know, I really recommend this if you're trying to find um, better success with bass fishing and you know this is not just a deep water you know bait to fish off the boat you can fish this from the bank and catch a lot of fish you know i really like it in clear water it's also a good option if you're dealing with a lot of, of heavily pressured um water as well you know if you're in like a densely populated area and you're having trouble catching fish a swim bait can definitely uh, make a difference for you so Give, out, give one of these baits a try. You know, you can sw uh, rig it on a jig head. That's what I do most of the time. It's um, something you can um, use as a trailer for other lures as well. You know, chatter baits and spinner baits and swim jigs as well. So uh, just a very versatile lure. And I think uh, a mistake not to have at least some kind of, you know, s swim bait in like the two and a half to three and a half inch range in your box. So uh, with that being said, if you made it this far into the video, I appreciate you. You should be subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. You know, this um, channel, we have uh, weekly fishing videos, you know, uh, primarily focused on fishing from the bank or wade fishing. And, you know, it's usually going to be uh, with lures like swim baits, you know, um, ultralight fishing, bass fishing, 
bait finesse system, BFS, uh, multi-species fishing. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.